if we reach the point where we have overspent so much uh, that things start crashing down, the black swan event occurs, there is a backstop available to every government in the world, and that backstop is Bitcoin. Hello there from Bedford in the United Kingdom. How are you all? Welcome to the What Bitcoin Did podcast, which is brought to you by the Mighty Kraken, the best place to buy, sell and trade Bitcoin. I'm your host, Peter McCormack, and I've got a really cool show for you today. I've got the newly elected senator and Bitcoiner, Cynthia Lummis. And this is a shorter interview than normal, so I do want to just give a quick shout out to my sponsors first. Okay, let's kick off with BlockFi, the future of Bitcoin and financial services. With BlockFi, you have Bitcoin loans and interests available, and you can find out more at BlockFi.com, which is B-L-O-C-K-F-I.com. We also have Kraken, the best place to buy, sell, and trade Bitcoin. You can find out more at Kraken.com, or you can download the app, which is available in the Apple and Google app stores. Just search for Kraken Pro, which is K-R-A-K-E-N-P-R-O. We also have Sportsbet.io, the best place for online gaming, and they also accept Bitcoin With all major sports back, you can head over to sportsbet.io to find out more, which is S-P-O-R-T-S-B-E-T.io. And also we have Casa, the best, the very, very best in Bitcoin security. To protect your Bitcoin and find out more about Casa, head over to keys.casa, which is K-E-Y-S dot C-A-S-A. Okay, so on to the show today, and it is a bonus show, and I am joined by the amazing Cynthia Lummis, the newly elected Wyoming senator, who is also a Bitcoiner, the first Bitcoiner to make it into the Senate. Now, it is really cool that Bitcoin is now going to be represented at such a high level of government, but not only that, Cynthia seems to be the perfect person to represent it. She describes herself as a libertarian, leaning Republican, and as a Bitcoiner, she shares many of the fears that we all have with growing government debt and the nonstop money printing. Cynthia's goals within the Senate are going to include working towards reducing government debt as well as the broad topic of Bitcoin and make sure its attributes as a store of value are understood within the Senate. This is going to be a really exciting step for Bitcoin and it's really great to get Cynthia on the show and I wish her best with her role in government. Now if you do want to reach out to me, if you've got any questions about the show, you can do it. It is hello at whatbitcoindid.com. Outside of that, have a great week and I'll see you all soon. Senator-elect Lummis, how are you? Very well, Peter. Thank you for uh, spending some time with me today. Well, thank you to you. You're far more important than uh, I will ever be. And uh, it's great to talk to you. You're my first senator and first congressman (laughs) I'm going to speak to, which is incredible. And uh, the first Bitcoin senator, as I believe. Is that true? I might be. Uh, I need to visit with Senator Kelly Leffler from Georgia. I understand that she may have had some connections to Bitcoin in the past. I hear that third hand. So I need to, uh, when we get together in January, learn whether that is in fact true. Well, I I know of uh, Senator Luffler and she, you know, I know her background, but you talk about Bitcoin a lot more. I've watched some of your interviews. You're, You're a bit more of a Bitcoiner. I do have, before we talk about Bitcoin, I do have a few questions first. Okay. What what was it like winning? I mean, that must have been a huge moment. <laughs> well, we'd worked at it for 18 months, so it was a long campaign. Uh, it, it just felt wonderful, such an honor to be the first woman to represent my state of Wyoming uh, in the U.S. Senate. I uh, am a native of Wyoming, graduated from the University of Wyoming, showed cattle and sheep in 4-H, and uh, I'm a, a rancher in Wyoming, so, and a lawyer, but uh, it's just an honor to uh, be able to represent my state, which I love so much. Do you know I've been to Wyoming? Where? I've been to, um, oh, now I've forgotten the name of the place. I was there with Caitlin Long at her event. Oh, oh was it the hackathon? What if I forgot him? It Laramie? was. Uh, was it Laramie? Laramie? Yeah. yeah, it was Laramie. I can't believe I forgot. I've been there. I've drunk whiskey with Tyler Lindholm. I've had the best steak, steak I've ever had in the U.S. Um, I love Wyoming. Well, it's a very special place. Smallest population mm. in the United States. But because of that, uh, people here innovate. Uh, they're very independent. And uh, it grows special people. I believe that. Yeah, I I found I found it was probably of all the places I've been to in America, the best representation of the America that you see 
in let's let's say kind of like the old films, the old American dream. Mm-hmm. You know, not too much government. Let people get on with it, what they want to do. I fell in love with the place. I could live there. It it is very much uh, a libertarian uh, leaning climate and culture uh, in terms of our uh, self reliance, our willingness to help each other uh, in a voluntary way uh, to achieve. Uh, some pretty astounding goals. And so um, it it should not surprise anyone uh, that Wyoming has become the leader in policy towards Bitcoin, in mm-hmm. creating state policies that have nurtured our ability to actually charter banks that can transact banking business in Bitcoin. Uh, we not only did that, but chartered a, a chancery court uh, that will uh, interpret the law and hopefully build a body of law uh, that will help guide uh, certainly Wyoming and other states in the nation as well, perhaps, with regard to developing policy in legislation and uh, in uh, legal interpretations that can be used for years to come. So you're, you're going to be known as the Bitcoin senator. That's what people, I, I imagine they're going to refer to you as. But let me ask you, could you possibly one day become the Bitcoin president? Is it possible? <laughs> Can we just find that now? Because I, I would like to think I'm talking to a future president. Well, I I suspect that uh, that will not be the case. Uh, however, uh, I, I really want to use my time in the U.S. Senate in part uh, to help introduce the topic of Bitcoin increase right. uh, the understanding in the Senate about Bitcoin, what it is, what it does, uh, how it can be a, a, an asset uh, that can grow and develop um, as an adjunct or basically alongside our fiat currency, uh, and that it should be allowed uh, a clear path, an avenue, uh, uh, an interstate highway, in fact, uh, to grow and develop alongside our fiat currency. Well, Bitcoin does feel like a very American idea to me. It does to me as well. Uh, it, if you look back in history, and I know you have, uh, mm-hmm. at uh, what constituted uh, in, in a currency uh, over the decades, really the, this period of time where fiat currency has been the go-to currency, uh, is sort of short uh, in the grand scheme of uh, how people have uh, exchanged goods and services throughout history. Uh, so the fact that something has come along now that transcends traditional fiat currency uh, and is uh, available uh, worldwide for individuals to transact business among themselves uh, without the constraints of uh, a fiat currency is is unique in our time period, but not unique in the history of uh, people. Well, it's a very unique issue, Bitcoin, in some ways, because for big government, I sometimes see it as potentially a problem because it's a currency they can't control. You know, they can't print. You know, they can't they can't really seize. They can regulate heavily, but they can't they can't control it. Whereas, and and I would always expect uh, senators and government people to be quite fearful of Bitcoin. And, and, and I think that's reflected sometimes. At times. Yet my experience in Wyoming is that it's the perfect currency for the kind of people who live in Wyoming. So there is that kind of clash because not everywhere in America is the same, right? Lots of different states treat things differently. So you've got quite an important job to actually educate other senators about this. I agree with you, Peter, that there's probably fear among people who do believe in big central governments. Uh, that Bitcoin uh, interferes with the, that sovereignty. Um, so I need to spend time with those people to help them understand how Bitcoin can function alongside a fiat currency, an adjunct store of value, in fact, a better store of value than a fiat currency. In the case of the U.S. currency, um, inflation is uh, baked into uh, the Federal Reserve's plan for the U.S. dollar. Uh, so it's no wonder that uh, our buying power is eroded. And for people my age who are 
entering the point in life where they're trying to live off their savings, it, it's terribly frustrating uh, to have a policy uh, where inflation is baked into the currency because the buying power of people who are on a fixed income and want to live off their life savings is constantly eroded. And that will not be the case with Bitcoin. Bitcoin provides uh, a more stable value to people either who are saving now uh, to live comfortably in the future, but also people who are on fixed income or, or approaching fixed income now. So are you a hodler? <laughs> I am a hodler. Uh, I've good, good. only bought, I've never sold. Uh, yes. And so I guess I am a hot one. So you've been excited this week like the rest of us. Yes, indeed. Uh, <laughs> it's been uh, fascinating to get up in the morning and get on my phone and ask Siri, what is the price of a Bitcoin today? So so how did you discover Bitcoin? And, and did it click for you straight away or did it take a bit of time? It took a bit of time. I was introduced to it by my son-in-law, Will Cole, from Austin. I know Will. Texas. Oh, do you? Okay. Yeah. Well, he, he was the one that introduced me to it. Uh, uh -huh. And uh, I had been Wyoming's state treasurer. I had invested our permanent funds. Uh, our permanent funds are monies derived from the mining of oil, gas, and coal. So the concept of mining... Uh, is very familiar to me, uh, as our state of Wyoming has mining as one of the bases of its economy. I had invested the proceeds of mining oil, gas, and coal uh, for the state's future. Uh, so the concept of mining Bitcoin and that analogy, regardless of you're mining something out of the ground or you're mining something on a computer, resonated with me, even though I am not by any means, uh, internet savvy. I wasn't a math major. Algorithms, code writing is all pretty foreign to me. Uh, but me the too. concept of mining did resonate. Brilliant. That's amazing. Yeah, I know Will. I've um, I, Will, I've hung out with him in Wyoming and eaten steak with him. And I've also hung out with him in Austin and watch football with him. I'm, I'm a big fan of Will. Will's a great guy. Well, that's that's amazing that, that uh, you've obviously got into it. Does I'm guessing the size of the debt and the increasing size of the debt is concerning for you. There is no kind of path to paying it off. There hasn't seemed to be for a long time. I guess that is one of your biggest concerns then. It is absolutely one of my biggest concerns. Uh, I know that there is no strategy, no plan for the United States to begin to retire its debt. Uh, when I entered Congress uh, in January of 2009, uh, we had just turned over to 10 trillion from 9 trillion uh, in debt. We're now uh, right of getting around the 27 trillion point. Congress is debating another COVID assistance bill that will probably come in somewhere between half a trillion and a trillion. And it is uh, money that we're borrowing uh, from future generations with no plan to repay it. Um, if interest rates go up, uh, our requirement that we first pay for interest on the national debt uh, will soon exceed the amount of one money that we spend on national defense. That's wow. absolutely unsustainable. So my concern is, one, we don't have a plan to retire our debt or even begin to retire the debt. Uh, and so we have to develop that plan. But alongside that, we need an alternative path just in case we fail. Uh, and I see the alternative path as Bitcoin, because you have the ability to invest in something uh, that has stability and a store of value. It is a finite resource. Uh, we know that there's only going to be 21 million Bitcoin mined, uh, and so it's finite scarcity creates value. The uh, integrity of Bitcoin has withstood the last decade or more, uh, and I believe it will um, do the same going forward. Um, and so it's just a matter of helping people in the United States Senate and in the U.S. House of Representatives understand what that 
second rail of a railroad line uh, can provide mm. for uh, the stability alongside our fiat currency. And I really do believe that Bitcoin will provide that going forward. Okay, so how do you feel about some of the regulations regarding Bitcoin? Um, obviously, Steve Mnuchin has uh, signaled that he wants to bring in newer regulations, one of those specifically re with regards to uh, the KYC, the Know Your Customer data and the AML data of, of people using specific wallets. Obviously, Bitcoiners are not a big fan of that because that, uh, that arose privacy. How do you personally feel about that kind of legislation? I do believe that that erodes privacy, and I believe it would be detrimental uh, to the ability of Bitcoin to um, advance its own on its own path in a way that helps governments understand its capabilities, uh, as well as individuals understand its capabilities. So I would rather spend my time educating people uh, in Congress about what it can do if it's allowed to run free, so to speak, without the kind of regulation that Secretary Mnuchin has proposed. Do you feel Bitcoin is more of a Republican idea or a Democratic idea or, or Democrat idea, or do you think it's not either? I think it's not either. Okay. I, I think it's more libertarian if you're looking for a political home uh, or peg to hang on. Uh, your hat on for Bitcoin, I think it's more libertarian uh, because it it transcends uh, a political party. Generally, mm -hmm. progressives, uh, Democrats uh, are thought of as the people who are uh, more quick to embrace innovation. But quite frankly, I've seen a lot of libertarian leaning Republicans embrace uh, Bitcoin in, in, in a way that makes some progressives uncomfortable because again progressives also believe in a large central government and mm -hmm. bitcoin is uh, not compatible i believe with regulation by a strong central government so uh, it doesn't fit well in either category which is yet another one of its virtues uh it's uh it, you can't put it on a peg see yeah we just need you down there in washington now lobbying mm -hmm creating a bit of noise and ensuring that people uh, understand what Bitcoin is. Do you have to spend a lot of time in Washington now as part of this? Uh, leading up to uh, being sworn in on January 3rd, uh, I have spent most of my time still in Wyoming. Uh, I, I went back to senator school, uh, and so I have a temporary office in one of the Senate office buildings. Um, we have two staffers that were allowed to have on the Senate payroll before they even take office. Their salaries then are deducted from uh, the amount of money that we're authorized to spend when we are sworn in. But uh, I probably won't spend much time there between now and uh, January. I do plan to go to Georgia uh, to help campaign for Kelly Leffler and uh, Senator Perdue. Uh, who are uh, will determine their elections will determine who controls uh, the U.S. Senate, whether it'll be the Democrats or Republicans. Uh, if both of those seats go to Democrats, then it'll be a 50-50 tie between Democrat and Republican senators. But in the United States, the Vice President of the United States acts as the President of the Senate, breaks ties, and therefore the um, majority would go to the Democrats. Um, I, I, that creates, in my opinion, a really dangerous situation. Uh, I would rather see a Republican Senate to be a check on the Democrat House and uh, an incoming uh, Biden administration. Yeah, so it's been... I mean, it's been a really crazy 2020, um, obviously, with regards to politics as much as anything else, a lot of division. Um, do you have a, like, how, how do you feel about that? And do you think there's a chance, you know, following, you know, my expectation that uh, Joe Biden will be sworn in as well in early January? Do you feel like there is something that can be done to kind of bring politicians closer together? I do. I, and I think that the public has shown that, they appreciate divided government. Uh, I, I see that because 
Um, at the same time, some people voted for Joe Biden. They also voted for uh, Republicans in the House and the Senate. Uh, so I think that the American public is smarter than sometimes they're given credit for, uh, that they appreciate that uh, government stability comes when you have a divided government providing checks and balances, which is exactly what the founders of the United States proposed. Uh, and so this is it playing out. Now, it w if we do get divided government, where uh, the Senate is in the hands of the Republicans, the House and the White House are in the hands of the Democrats, it, it will be necessary for people to reach across the aisle uh, to make good policy. Uh, if the Democrat wins the Senate, the Democrats will not have to reach across the aisle, and they will be able, able to impose more radical uh, departures uh, from what was proposed by the founders and I think very detrimental to the long-term future of our country, uh, which is one of the reasons I'm going to Georgia to campaign for the Republicans. I like the idea of a check and balance uh, on uh, the other um, party. And and what else are you looking to, like what are important policies for you? I know, I know uh, uh, conservation is, uh, is that a primary issue for you? Well, my state, uh, Peter, as you have seen, mm -hmm. is the epitome, I believe, of people managing resources well. Uh, and that uh, when we have healthy forests, clean water, clean air, uh, we can still utilize resources in a way that creates a solid foundation of stewardship for those resources. So use of resources and stewardship of resources go hand in hand. They're not exclusive. And it is important to me that we be able to utilize these research, uh, resources while uh, we maintain uh, a, an extremely healthy environment. And that comes through conservation. Uh, so I'm a believer in, for example, having conservation easements uh, on ground, but to have that ground managed by individuals uh, rather than government employees. Uh, I, I think that that's a, a, the preferable arrangement to ensure rock solid stewardship. And are there other any other particular issues that are really important to you that I know you're going to be a very you have a very very busy few years, but other key issues you, you are particularly important for you? Um, the debt and the deficit are uh, of huge importance to me, mm -hmm. uh, as we discussed earlier. During the time when I was out of the house, from the beginning of 2017 until now, um, I had served on something called the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget, which is mm -hmm. uh, a bipartisan group trying to find ways to protect our fiat currency by reducing spending or having a better match between uh, spending and the to collection of taxes. So we're not accruing debt every year. Uh, and the more I've learned about the path we're on, the more uh, dangerous uh, I think that path is. So I'd like to find ways, for example, that we could have triggers where if we get, say, $35 trillion in debt, that that would automatically trigger uh, Medicaid to be uh, block granted to states. It would trigger ways to protect Social Security with reforms that are necessary for it to be self-funding. Uh, and the same with uh, Medicare, because those three programs uh, are what are helping drive our debt and our deficit. Um, I also believe uh, right-sizing uh, what is called discretionary spending, uh, which is the remainder of the spending that occurs in the United States. That other spending I just named, Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, and a few other things, constitute entitlement spending. Uh, we need to make sure that those are self-sustaining at the same time uh, that we manage our the discretionary portion of our budgets in a responsible manner. Yeah, the, the, the level of spend is quite insane. I mean, our spend here in the UK is going up a lot as well, especially with coronavirus. Um, our government uh, debt-to-GDP ratio is over 100% now. Um, mm. I have similar concerns here. Um, why do you think it has got so out of hand in the US? Well, I think it started when... Uh, during the war in Iraq, uh, we took our eye off 
making sure we had enough money to cover what we were spending in the war. And that was when we started running deficits and debt. And then it took off from there. We became comfortable with the notion that we could decouple the amount of money we're spending from the amount of money we're taking in because there was this crisis, this uh, post-9-11 uh, necessity uh, that we spend more than we take in. And then we got complacent and comfortable with that because then came the bank, the financial crisis of uh, 2008 and 2009. Oh, another crisis. Well, let's overspend uh, because if we invest in infrastructure, we can get through this. And then it just became institutionalized to spend more than we take in. So during the end of the Clinton presidency, and the early years of the Bush administration, we had reached a point where it was things were getting really uh, aligned, our spending and our our uh, revenue. Uh, now there, it's there's a complete departure. Uh, Democrats, uh, and I'm oversimplifying this, but Democrats uh, want to tax and spend. Republicans want to borrow and spend. The only thing they have in common is spending. And so what do we do is we spend too much. That's why we need Bitcoin, right? Okay, well, look, I'm conscious you... That's why we need Bitcoin. I'm conscious you've got a hard stop soon. Hopefully, at some point, we can do this again, hopefully in person, when the planes are flying. Just as a closing point, for a message you would want to give to all other senators out there regarding Bitcoin. Well, I would ask the other senators to spend some time with me and people uh, who have expertise about Bitcoin. I think it will increase their comfort level uh, with Bitcoin. It'll increase their comfort level with allowing it to develop unabated by government restrictions and take its rightful place as a store of value that's uh, available uh, to everyone in the world. And that its existence uh, actually provides a, a stabilizing mechanism uh, for uh, worldwide uh, exchanges of goods and services uh, as well as uh, a great store of value, uh, and that we then can, it actually frees us uh, up. It's kind of a, something that frees governments up to say there is a backstop. Uh, if, if we reach the point where uh, we have overspent so much uh, that things start crashing down, the black swan event occurs uh, with regard to any fiat currency, whether it's ours or yours or China's or Japan's, um, that there is a backstop uh, available to every government in the world, and that backstop is Bitcoin. Well, I think as a Bitcoin community, we're very lucky to have you uh, as a senator uh, in, in Washington at some point fighting uh, fighting for us. Um, thank you for speaking to me today. I wish you the best, and I hope we can do this again sometime. Let's do. It's been my pleasure, and I look forward to learning more about Bitcoin from you. Uh, and what you see is its future. Is it going to become a world reserve currency? Uh, which countries will elevate it uh, to become, uh, which countries will provide it the best avenue to grow uh, to its full potential? Uh, these are the kind of things I think that people like you uh, can advise me about and uh, that would be a helpful discussion for me as well. So keep that in mind, Peter. I will keep that in, I'll keep that in mind and uh, I'll, I'll have a chat with Will as well and perhaps the three of us can get together <laughs> and have a, have a steak and chat about it. Well, take care. Lovely to meet you and I uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you, Peter. How cool is that? How cool is it to have a proper Bitcoiner representing everyone at the highest level of government? One thing I love about what's going on in Bitcoin at the moment is we're seeing this kind of massive change whereas 2017 it was a bubble but there were a lot of fears about what it actually meant would bitcoin be cracked down upon but now and this year everything's a bit different we've got massive institutional investment we have people within government who actually support bitcoin and whilst there's regulation there's people working against the regulation not just cynthia also warren davison has also been working against some of the tighter regulations against bitcoin i'm sure cynthia is going to kill it in washington i wish her all the best hopefully i'll get to talk to her again sometime anyway i hope you enjoyed this bonus if you do want to reach out to me you can it's hello at whatbitcoindid.com outside of that have a great week and i'll see you all soon